Okay, so we're up and running. Hello everyone, how's it going? So in this video, I want to show you how to make this exact scene. I want to be showing you how to model the house. I will be giving you a link to download it from the SketchUp warehouse. And I will be showing you what add-on to use. I will be focusing on the environment and lighting. And will show you how I make my natural scenes. Such as the ones in front of you. They use the same exact layering and techniques that I will be showing you in a minute. Now this is not a step by step tutorial, it will be slightly sped up, however if you have some slight experience like a month or two in Blender you should be able to follow easy enough. Again I will send over or give links to all of the assets needed and follow along, you could make some really good renderings following this. So here I'm just starting with a house which I have improved, I want to be showing you how to improve it right now maybe later on, however this is the link, I will. it will be in the description import using the SketchUp import or import and using Collada right so SketchUp warehouse has multiple uh, formats it has SketchUp format and Collada but as you can see I won't be spending too much time showing you the materials since they won't mostly be visible especially this tiles I have done it using a brick texture which I have played around with its frequency to make it look uh, and its squash to make it look normal right so like tiles and I added the same travertine texture I will link down below as well and play around with the scale and offsetting to make it look like two different tiles it won't be visible again however it is something that's there right you can't lose anything plug the same map into the roughness and into the bump for the glass i have added a con concrete texture into the roughness and added some volume absorption with a bluish tint to make it not look very clear right it's more of architectural glass as you can see this is the metal i added a, the same concrete texture and plug it into the roughness and for the metallic value I made a 0.7 since I didn't want it to be very metallic it's not realistic however it looks fine in this case now I like to have a certain matte cap and have some cavity and shadows to help me visualize what I'm doing in the viewport so in this point I will be adding a simple plane right so the plane is a plane right shift a add a plane which will be the base of our terrain we will be Improving it later on with a technique that I don't see many people using, right? They might use it, but they won't use it in the same way that I use it. Add a camera all early on to uh, only work on areas where you really need to work. For the camera, I want it to have a vertical aspect ratio and a focal length of 20 millimeters, so I want some distortion in the sky mostly. As you can see, I'm setting the aspect ratio, I'm adding some uh, proportional guys to help me point the camera the right way and giving it a height of 1.6 1.4 I can't really remember so as you could see I'm just making it more or less centered right I want to have a third for the ground a third for the house and a third for the sky using the shift Y which will help us rotate without having any distortion in the buildings right I'm just adding some more interesting type of hill shape right so I don't see much of the horizon, so which it's uh, easier for me to go away with less instances to save up on render times. Here I'm adding some trees. You could get those from the uh, from Sketchfab. You could get those from Blender Cut. You could get those from Polyhaven. You could get those from anywhere on the internet. Just have anything that's really simple. Also, if you're getting any of them from Megascans, make sure to plug the normal into the normal, remove the clear coat, and have the roughness into the roughness right it's usually in the uh, specular as you could see here i'm just duplicating these around you know we don't really have to care about the quality as much you know this is way too overkill using mega scan assets you could use some free ones you could use some sketchfab ones as i mentioned earlier and just add to add some of these right to give the terrain a bit of a cracked look we don't want a perfect even terrain you know just add as many have some different elevations have some different rocks for once we add our grasses i mean they won't be visible since we will add grass later on and some bushes just to give it more interesting layering and height differences here i am just adding a fair bit of these you know you could get away with just simple cubes with some textures however i just wanted to use these ones since i already have access to them this is a workflow that I use a lot, especially for uh, commercial projects, for example. I like to add this, right? So if I can see just a tad bit of these roots on the ground, it, it, it's a win for me, right? 
it's really easy. It's really fast. Here I am just adding some cycle, uh, adding some settings, adjusting settings. You can't add any settings. Adding the cloud layers, uh, HDRI, and playing with the strength and adding a sunset, the HDRI lacks large contrast. I will now try to match the shadow. As you could see, we have a tiny bit of shadow from the HDRI shown, which we will try to match it using our sun. You know, I'm not sure if it's obvious from the YouTube compression, however, it's very obvious on the screen and it should be easy enough for you. There is an add-on for that, however, I totally forgot its name. I'm not sure if it's even there anymore, you know. Now I will be adding some trees which I have got from 3D Sky. You know, they are 3ds Max trees which I have purchased for 3ds Max and I converted them to Blender. Adding, you could download some free ones, right? There are ones that I will link, you know. The best one is from Max Tree. It's free. You know, this pack is free. You could use it for whatever purpose you want, I believe. And the way I'm just adding these using the Geoscatter add-on. Using a density scatter, choose your assets. Have a more or less realistic density in order for Blender not to crash beforehand. You could always improve, uh, add upon it, right? So here I am just playing around with its density. I will be adding a vertex group for it to not grow out of our house. I really don't want any trees growing out of the house. Adding it into the calling mask. The video that's, I think, like three weeks ago goes into this a bit in details. And you could always just, if you have access to this add-on, you could go ahead and look through the documentation and plenty of tutorials on YouTube. Playing with the scale, playing with its rotation, playing with its density. And always coming back to the vertex group and adding some trees closer to the house. Again, I don't want any trees growing out of our house. I want to be realistic with it. You know, it's, it updates in real time, which is really good for the purpose of development. Look really quickly. Play around with the seed. It makes it until you get a nice composition. I want a... And as you can see here, we have a black halo near our leaves, which is, since we don't have enough light paths in our transparent, which add those, they won't add render times, so don't be afraid. What will add render time is the gloss and diffuse as well as a subsurface and other types. However, the transparent is fine. As you can see, I'm doing the same exact thing for other trees, which I have gotten from Botanic add-on. You know, just trying to add as many trees as I could. Right, I will also add these ones to hide up a little bit from the horizon and cast some more heavy shadows. For these ones, I don't want too many of them, which is why I have hand placed them. This is an option in GeoScatter, as you can see. And you know, just try to have some difference in the levels of height, which gives us a lot of interest in the scene. I will be hopefully doing some really in-depth videos. I already made the train, however, I will be sharing it later on. Right in the video, I'm not sure if I should Make it in the same format. I don't think this format is really good for that source and it will have a lot of informations. Anyway, as you can see, I'm adding the plane in order to add a opacity noise map to emulate the effect of, of clouds. As you can see, you know, just to have a bit of shadows. I don't even have to add that since our trees will already do that for us. However, I think it's a good addition. I don't want to see it. I only want it to cast shadows, which is why I will disable its uh, camera ray visibility. Again, the same techniques using GeoScatter, scattering our bushes, right, from Botanic. And here is everything with the rocks, which we scattered. Now, I don't want these ground to be obvious, which is why I want to add our grass right now. So for the grass, I have gotten it. You could get it from both, and if you could get it for, for free from anywhere, you could get it from the link that I will be sharing down below. Now, from mega scans, the material is not set up well, which is why you have to set the material principle to BSDF with an albedo and mix it with a translucent. And after the translucent, mix the mixed shader with a transparent driven by the opacity map provided by Quixel Bridge. They look usually really good. They are very light, you know. The the Quixel guys probably share the best nature assets, right? They might not be as optimized for Blender, however, they're really good. Now I want to scatter it on top of our 
rocks and ground, which is why I want to clear any objects data, right? I don't, I want to be sure to clear everything in case I have done all the by mistake. I have added instances. I won't be talking much about this exactly. I will be talking about this in future videos more precisely. This is a problem that many people face and don't know the solution of. As you can see, applying the scale, adding our grass using the density scatter and you know just playing around with the settings trying to have a good scale trying to have a good distribution density and all around just want a short grass layer as you could see more greenish our other types of uh, flowers will be less green these are the ones that i have used right i'm forwarding them and scatter the same exact techniques you know it's 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 rehearsed by now you know you do the same exact thing using this add it's really useful saves up tens of hours doing the same exact thing for the flowers you know you could add as many as you want however i want to keep this relatively short you know the scene took me one hour to make and the house took me half an hour to fix up and make look better Add in some slight depth of field, it's not really necessary in this case, and add in some hand placed trees. You know, you should always do a pass to add hand placed assets. You can't really rely on how Blender scatters your assets. Here I am just adding some bushes to hide the horizon, since as you could see, I only scattered grass on top of the ground assets for mega scans. I don't want I don't find it necessary to scatter on top of our terrain, right? I will have other hundreds of thousands, if not millions of assets, which I don't really need. Adding a volume, a principal volume to a cube, which I will tilt to face the camera. As always, add some density, add some anisotropy, and add some slight emission strength with some bluish tint. I don't want a fog or haze, I just want the atmosphere to look okay. Right, I'm just making sure that the values are slight. I want some slight overexposed areas, you know, it adds a little bit of contrast. Don't be afraid of overex overexposed renders if you know what you are doing. It look, it's natural, right? Cameras don't usually have a really high dynamic range. Adding some trees again, you know, just trying to have a good composition. Now adding some rocks, you know, you could add as many details as you want. To. It's It's really up to you. You know, it's, it's, it's a really simple process. And with more time you spend, the better it will look. Add some bushes, add some different trees, add whatever assets that you have access to. So, adding some small post effects using the uh, Photographer add-on. I typically do this using Affinity Photo. So, in summary, I have shown you how to make this exact thing. It took me personally one hour since I already already made it. right? So, I know what I'm doing. It should take you around two hours right since you have all the assets necessary this is not a step-by-step -step video so just try to slow it down you know watch it a couple of times if you want and it should help you out to make something like this you know these techniques i like to push about watch about making videos that you could watch in one hour and learn a lot in it so as you could see i think we have a good image for one hour and Take care until next time.